It takes about 30 grades. We want democracy of the people. <laughs> we are democracy. We are democracy. We the people. We are the national leaders. The people going to rise like the water.
just want to say that I got invited to democracy school and accepted the lovely invitation and I had this thought so I blurted it out at Michelle about well we're going to be at the courthouse we're all going to be wearing red shirts and what else and she said what's your idea <laughs> and then I don't know I didn't think that I was going to have to do anything but <laughs> she explained to me that that's how it works <laughs> and, uh, and I had a, an awful lot of support I didn't really do this but um, I did get schooled a little bit so thanks Michelle and everybody else and Michelle's going to take over this mic because she's a lot better at saying what's what. But uh, I believe in democracy. I just want to say that. And I don't necessarily think that we have ever really had it after being to democracy school. But I have grandkids like a lot of other people here, so I'm going to keep doing this too. And maybe someday we will have democracy in this country. because we believe in democracy and we're very clear that we don't live in the democracy as of yet. That, that's on us. The missing quotient in what a real democracy is is the people, we the people are the decision makers. We um, and many, many good people work diligently for two years to gather signatures for two very important initiatives that are not on the November 6th ballot. That's what you see signs here. That's what it should have looked like. We should have had these two on there. This is a miscarriage of justice. This is on the judiciary. This is not on us. We did our due diligence. We walked the, the, the narrow path, the very straight and narrow path to get these initiatives qualified. We, we gathered over 30,000 signatures for two initiatives. And at the last, uh, the final hour, we were denied. This is justice denied, and we won't stand for it. It's why we are here. Yeah. We won't go away until corporate rights are um, removed. We won't go away until human rights and the rights of nature are elevated above those of corporate rights. Right on. And yes. that is, that's why we're here. That is totally why we are here. We are the voices for those who cannot speak, the rivers, the animals, the young people. Um, we have to do the work. We are the people that they are looking to, that, that the, the forces that we cannot hear except in our quiet moments, that's who's looking to us. And we owe it to them the, the next generations and those generations coming. We do this work because we love each other and we love the planet. And we know that this is the righteous work. We will not be dis dissuaded by courtrooms, judges, corporate heads, government, uh, uh, what do you call this? Black Hacks, government hacks, right? Yeah. Um, we will not be dissuaded. We know this work is long and hard, but we are motivated and inspired by people's movements that came before us. Um, I am always encouraged and inspired by the beautiful people that I work with, all of you people, and those across the planet who are doing this work. This is a global movement. Community rights is a, gl a global movement. And community is not just humans. It's the animals and the, and the natural communities as well. So, uh, hey, blessings on us all. We're in for a long struggle, but with one another's help and love, we ain't going nowhere. Dickinson, another amazing comrade, who's going to give you some of the meat of what we're doing here today in this courtroom. Thank you again for being here. And okay, so um, so I was asked to tell a little bit about what's going on with the, this proceeding here today. Um, so basically at 10 o'clock, everybody knows that there's going to be a a uh, court hearing for our right to local community self-government, which is one of the two initiatives. Uh, it, it, we, as Michelle said, we collected 15,000 signatures for that initiative and 15,000 signatures for the Freedom from Aerial Herbicides Alliance initiative. Um, 
which has already been through this process before with the county. So at 10 o'clock we'll be before a judge arguing that the county was wrong in, uh, in basically denying the right to local community self-government a, a place on the ballot. That's what this sign right here says. Um, these, these initiatives were qualified in time so that the, uh, the Freedom from Burial Herbicides should have been on the May ballot, we didn't get to vote on that, and the right to local self-government was supposed to be on the ballot tomorrow and we're not going to get a vote on that because of the, the county's actions. And they basically are applying uh, you know, these very uh, uh, unprecedented legal uh, maneuvers to deny us that right. They're basically saying that, um, that we didn't comply with the separate vote requirement. And we're, we're arguing that that's, that, uh, that requirement should not have applied and that they, applied, they, that they were wrong to judge it the way that it did. There's um, a bunch of things that are in play here, but the real thing is whether or not we as the people have a fundamental right to, uh, to govern and to make local laws. Under the Oregon Constitution, the people are co-equal um, in terms of the lawmaking power to the legislature. We're not like an ugly stepchild or anything like that. We are a co-equal power, and, um, and what the, the actions here is doing is basically saying that our power is minuscule by applying more and more restrictive rules and ones that were never part of the original progressive movement to give us the initiative powers. They basically are uh, narrowing what we can do to almost nothing. That you can't do anything substantive if you apply the rules the way they, they are applying them. And so uh, one of the things that this uh, the initiative power gives you, in addition to making law, is, is it is a mechanism of free speech. It's a way of having us get something on the ballot to be able to discuss issues of importance. If we're not allowed to move something forward because of various never changing or ever changing rules for getting on the ballot, we have no opportunity to have that free speech right. And the chief petitioners, the three people who are the signatories of the initiative, and the public who's all uh, signed those things are being denied that free speech right. In addition, there is a lot of work that went into this, that, and, and this is a, um, a thing of value that we've created as part of our lawmaking process, and they're denying us our due process rights as, as well. There's supposed to be a way where they, um, well one, they, they actually literally made up the process for, um, for uh, assessing this separate vote thing. It's not, there's no statute that says how they're going to do that, and so they made that up. They, they used something from another part. And that's also a separation of powers violation. The, the uh, administrative office, which is the county clerk, has no lawmaking power. They can't just make up the statute, but that's what they did. Um, the other, yes. what's that? It's called BS. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and then the other thing is, if there is a separate vote test, which is typically not applied to local initiatives, it's applied, should have been applied after the election. You're, we're supposed to be entitled to bring our, our measure to the ballot, have the people vote on it, and if there's anything unconstitutional about that, they can deal with that later. There's no ability to look at the substance of an initiative before the election. That's essentially what they're doing. And um, and again, that's another separation of powers because that, that after the election uh, review should have been a judicial thing, but here we have the administrative branch doing that for us. So there's all kinds of ways where they violated our rights by doing what they're doing, and, um, and that's what this hearing is about. I expect that because we've been here before, the county will probably, or the judge will probably take the same position they took in um, the Freedom from Marital Herbicides Alliance. Um, and in fact, that's what the, uh, the timber lawyers are arguing, which is that, oh, hasn't this all been decided? And so uh, that's, we're appealing that. We're also, we have a, a, an appeal of the aerial spray ban in the uh, Oregon Court of Appeals. And that's gonna have a first uh, oral argument in a, another week. So, so that's proceeding, we're not giving up, this is just one part of this, and we're going to approach it in a lot of different ways. So we, we, we should have won and we should win on the merits for these initiatives that we've already done all the work for, um, and we will pursue that as far as, it, as we have to. But we also have an election tomorrow, and hopefully we will change the, the, uh, the uh, measure of the county such that maybe the county will act. But the reason we're doing this is not because we want to be legislating on this. We just don't want to be sprayed. We don't want to have corporate harms happen to us. The, the legislative branch, our government, is not, is not protecting us. And so that's why we have to take this stance. So, thank you. Okay, so the court proceedings start at 10 o'clock.
they're going to give you the shakedown. You're going to take off your uh, metal uh, bracelets or whatever in there uh, before you go in. Um, good luck to all of us. I mean, we've got the sun shining today. It was supposed to rain, so it's, to me that's a good omen. I think uh, no matter what happens in there, we will not go away, and you can bet on that. Um, Monday at the First uh, United Methodist Church on 13th and Oak at 6 o'clock for a community rights action meeting. Please join us. That is where it is happening publicly. Um, and get on our mailing list. If you're not already on our mailing list, we will keep you informed. But uh, as I said, we will not go away. We will not be dissuaded regardless of what goes on in the courtroom. Uh, and we're not naive. So um, thank you all for being here. You're beautiful. Woo!